Hi guys, in today's one, we'll take a look at the Arthur Laser Master 2 Pro. We'll see how to set this thing up running and we'll do a whole lot of projects with it. Some of them are like HD projects, you know, where you could actually make some money out of it. And some of them are like personalization where you could actually fine tune it and give some extra pizzazz to it. So without further ado, let's get on with the build and let's see how this thing goes. And by the way, if you still haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Let's quickly talk about the software. I use Laser GRBL, which is a Windows based application. People on the forums seem to think that it is one of the best software that is completely free to the end user. After you install that, plug the USB cable on the laser and connect it to your laptop. Windows will now automatically detect your author laser and set up the device. The very first thing to get used to the laser is to use the jog controls that's located here. You can practice this by clicking the right button, up button, etc. and watch the laser head move following your commands. Another useful feature on the jog panel is this home button. This is useful to bring the laser head back to the home position that you set. This will come in handy if you want to dial in the laser head's position on your workpiece. Here you have the focus button. If you click on that, you can see where the laser is currently pointed. This along with the blink button are really useful in positioning your workpiece to any coordinates on the laser bed. You also have a find home button that will navigate you to the home point that you had set. For your first test attempts, it goes without saying that Google is your friend for finding images to engrave and cut. Keep in mind that there are countless sites that provide you with free templates and there are also sites that sell you detailed plans on Etsy, Amazon and even on sites like these. I just downloaded a few random ones that looked interesting and easy enough to try. Next bring in the image to laser GRBL. If it is a SVG file, it already has the object path and size information inside the file. So all you have to do is click on the materials database icon and select the type of materials and whether you would like to engrave or cut. The software gives a recommended setting by default. If the results are not satisfactory, then you will have to play around with it. And when you have fine tuned it, make note of it in an Excel or a notebook for future reference. Here I am adjusting the z-axis to get the correct focal length. This is a magnetic shield cover that can be popped off when required. Before you start any engraving, I would recommend to use the frame option. This will move the laser head around the periphery of your image and because it does that, it will highlight your workpiece and you can see if it is actually on the desired path of the laser head. It also helps you in aligning the workpiece correctly with respect to the X and Y axis. So there is no reason for not to do it. So with that out of the way and with my workpiece perfectly aligned and confirmed, let's start engraving. Hit the play run button and that's basically it. Do make sure you're not looking directly at the laser and whatever it takes, make sure to wear the safety goggles. You would also see the estimated time to complete at the bottom status bar. So that's our first engraving and I honestly think that the fine line details are all there and it does look pretty good. Now this section covers if you face issues hitting the soft limit switches. So while testing another file, the laser engraver seems to cut off at exactly at the same point. Now there are a few reasons why this could happen. Your initial thoughts would be just to reset the run and redo it again. But as you can see, the engraving hit the alarm at the exact same point. It took some time to understand what was going on, but it seems like the limit switches threshold had reached. Now you can either move your workpiece a bit forward and try it again, or you could readjust the belt tensions on the Y axis. Or as I am doing here, you can just disable the limit on the software configuration side. Set the variable value for 20 as 0 and write the configuration back to your laser engraver. And that will resolve the issue, so keep this in mind if you face the same problem. So far we looked at engraving wood, now let's look at some money making Etsy projects. Personalizing engraving on wooden spoons retails between 4 to 6 pounds. So let's try engraving them here. So I picked a logo of my wife's company and dropped that into laser GRBL. 
I left all the parameters as default and selected the conversion as line to line tracing and the direction as diagonal. Next, I resize the image over here and then hit create. After that, I hit the focus button to confirm the laser head position and once I was happy with it, I hit the run option. The whole engraving took like around 30 seconds and because I was batching this out, I marked the boundaries of the wooden spatula with a marker so that I can just place the next set at the exact dialed in position. And just like that, you have now a few custom engraved wooden spatulas. Now let's look at engraving a movie poster or image on the small mobile phone stand. Now this is also from IKEA. Since this was for the kids, I decided to download a PNG image of minions of the internet and move that into laser GRBL. I played around a little bit on the parameter side to get a better accurate representation of the image. And once that was done, I cropped the image to the relevant shape as well. After resizing the image to fit the mobile holder, I framed the item and then hit the run button. To get a slightly deeper image, I made two passes. Next, let's try engraving on oak. So I pulled in a draft logo into laser GRBL and set the parameters as solid wood and engraving and ran the program. Even though the engraving was picture perfect, I wasn't happy with the logo. I wanted the insides to be filled in as well. The earlier image was a SVG file format and that had lost its filled in detail somewhere. So I opened up the PNG version of the same file and reran the program again. This time it came out like what I had in mind. So yes, you do need to practice a few iterations before you can get it right. And that's a steep learning curve on using SVG files and how the parts play. While engraving smaller round shaped items like this handle, it is best to clamp them down. And you can see the logo engraved isn't bad either for a PNG file. Now let's look at printing an image with much more complex detail on it, like this Coca-Cola poster. In laser GRBL, the settings that you need to change is this. Select the one bit DW dithering and the dithering option to Atkinson. Then the software will map out a more realistic path. And now that's pretty accurate and it looks great. Now let's look at making a custom DIY laser bed for cutting. The base of this is just welded galvanized wire panel, otherwise also known as your usual chicken wire mesh. The real deal are these honeycomb panels as shown here. And they elevate your workpiece up on your work surface so that when the laser cuts through your workpiece, it wouldn't scorch or cut your real work table surface. These panel retails for around 50 pounds. At this point, I'm just winging it and will invest in a proper honeycomb bed later. Right now, what you're seeing me do is just cutting down the wire mesh and then folding it up for rigidity. I used an old IKEA door panel as a border frame and then screwed in two pieces of timber just to hold it down in place. After the shape was established, I used a few washers and screws to tie it all down. And with that, your DIY laser bed is done. I'm not exactly sure where I've seen this laser bed design before, but I would just like to say as a disclaimer that as much as I would like to take credit, this design is not my original idea in any shape or form. Now let's make an open box using finger joints. And for this, I'm cutting down some 3.6 millimeter plywood sheets. The setup is 100% power and then clicking on the material DB icon, I set the thickness to 3mm plywood. Next, after framing the target, I set the program to run. It was all going smooth until the laser reached this specific position. The fire alarm on board the machine seems to have gone off. As I couldn't see any fire or anything unusual, I just reset the switch and tried it again. So I asked the program to resume from the last command send coordinate. But for some reason when it started cutting, it actually started from the start. 
I tried this a few times, but it always followed the same path, so I hit the cancel run option. Now since the workpiece was already on the table, I didn't want to change the location of that or the laser head out of alignment. So I just quickly copied the same SVG file, took that to Inkscape and removed the parts of the image that I didn't need to cut. Then I loaded the file back into laser GRBL and continued with the burn. But as luck would have it, it failed at exactly at the same position. And that reminded me of something that I read off the internet. It looks like the fire alarm sensors on the unit thinks that there's a fire going on. So I did what any respectable DIYer would do and turned off that parameter, flame sensor count to zero in the configuration setup. And guess what, after all this, it started working fine. Next, I opened up a vintage sign to engrave on one of the side of the boxes. Considering the fact that there were multiple runs made to cut the sheet, the backside of this plywood had very little burn or scotch marks. And that's a testament to the quality of the laser head and of course the raised bed design as well. And this part where the load file was changed midway and all that, there are a few sections that require some manual work, like over here, but rest of the cut looks absolutely fine. Then I cut off the remaining parts of the box with no further drama. Now there might have been some of the smarter ways to recover from all those issues and if you would have done something else that was different then please do let me know. And now let's look at the next project, making a spray paint can holder. So one of the advantages of having a laser engraver or CNC for that matter is that it's just like another helping hand in your workshop. When they do the cutting work you could be doing something else. In this case, while the laser was cutting out the parts for the spray paint can holder, I was gluing up parts from the previous finger joint box project. So for this, I used a 5.5mm plywood rather than the 3.6mm plywood. And actually this 5.5mm width is outside the cutting capacity of this 5.5W diode laser. But hey, let's just give it a try and see what happens. So basically you can see that it cut through the top, but if you turn this around, you can see that the laser or the settings used wasn't powerful enough to fully cut through the material. So I started popping it out and forcing the material on the cut mark. Now this isn't ideal, but then again, it's only a workshop tidy project. And I'm not that fussed about the finished look at this point, as long as it can do its function properly. I used some Starborn super glue to hold everything in place. And used two 50mm screws to hold it down as well. By the way, free plans for this and all other projects that I've used are linked below. Next let's try engraving on leather. I got this image with the lyrics of Enter Sandman off the internet and thought that it would be cool if you could print this on a piece of leather. I knew that the resolution was pretty poor to start off with but still decided to go for it as I would at least get the outline of a guitar engraved. As expected the lyrics wasn't clear at all but then again it was a real tough act to ask. Now let's try and create a jeans patch. So I downloaded a logo of Harley Davidson and decided to engrave that. However, in the materials DB, if I select cotton cloth, the only option that I got by default was cut. But I wanted to engrave, so I did the easy option and selected the material as leather and changed the action to engrave. The cut version under the cotton cloth material selection might have worked if you had dialed down the power or increased the speed. Once this is done, I opened up another image. Now this is to cut out the path as a perfect circle. After checking the measurements of the patch, I set the program to cut. And now with a little bit of final cleaning up, the circular Harley Davidson jeans patch is ready. Next let's look at engraving on metals. 
Now keep an open mind that this is just a diode laser, so your options are limited, but it can be achieved to some extent by dialing in your settings. This kitchen knife is some plated steel blade, and I'm not sure on the exact metal, but it could only barely make an etch on the blade. And on this brass plate, I couldn't get it to engrave anything at all. So I spray painted a section black and tried engraving it again. And this time it burnt out the sillout of the image and it looked fine. So I tried it on my Dewalt table saw driving knife and that worked fine as well. And it works fine on mobile phone cases as well. Just make sure that you select the correct material DB on the options. Now this is an interesting project that involves cutting paper or cardboard. If you are traveling and flying around, you know that when you land at a destination airport, there's always a small tension that someone else might pick your bag up if it looks similar to theirs. So I created a custom cutout with some of the more popular airlines. The idea is to cut it out and then use it as a stencil and spray paint it on your bags. Kind of like how Derastar tags work. And this worked out perfect. With all these projects, you can clearly see that with the laser engraver, it opens a whole new world of opportunities. Not only can you personalize your work, but you can also create unique things and even sell products on Etsy and other websites. Earlier last year, I was on the lookout to buy one of these lasers. And incidentally, this particular Author Laser Master 2 Pro was sent to me for review by Cinesmall. I am pretty new to laser engraving, but from my experience with this laser, it works perfectly well. And more importantly, it's built perfectly well as well. Now, I've had this for over a month now and have already done over a dozen projects, including commission engraving ones like these. And based on my experience, I can happily recommend this product to be among the ones that you should shortlist. There are many other reviews on the same laser on YouTube, so obviously please do your own research as well. I'm not sure but there could be an affiliate link pinned below if you do decide to check it out. So please leave a comment below on what you think of the laser and the projects that I did. And as always thanks for watching and please subscribe.